Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our harvest uh, celebration for this year. It's just wonderful to see so many people here again this morning, and uh, Debbie's just taken uh, two or three photos for posterity. Uh, if anybody, you're all in disguise anyway, really, effectively. Um, but if anybody doesn't want um, uh, their photo to be taken uh, or you know, shown anywhere, please let Debbie know and we can adjust it in some kind of way. It's, it's interesting seeing people coming in um, because you don't always recognise people. And I saw Martin and Karen come in and uh, I thought, well, who's that woman with Martin? And because uh, Karen's had her hair done. And, uh, and I, was, you know, I was very thankful when I realised it was Karen. And uh, so, welcome to you too. That's what you get for sitting on the front row. You know. Okay, brilliant. Okay, we've got some uh, uh, announcements. It's Father Moses week this week. Father Moses is an archdeacon in, I always forget, Ghana, is it? Ghana, in Ghana, who we've, he was around before I was around, so that's how I, I don't really, I've not met him, so I don't really know who he is. But, you know, I've obviously heard of him. We collect for him on a monthly basis. There's a yellow kind of bucket out there. Uh, where you can put in a pound we, or, or more. The money that we collect goes for maintaining his um, uh, four by four vehicle. I think his archdeaconry, the area, the archdeacon of Liverpool looks after Liverpool. In Ghana, I think his archdeaconry is about the size of England. So um, he needs a good car. So that bas basically, that's what we, we help support. And hopefully, he will come back and visit us one day, although Rob and I have talked about, you know, maybe in better times, easier times, of organising a church trip um, out there. Um, well, we maybe go and see him, maybe go and help with us some stuff, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, NHS test and trace QR code, we're asking that you download this uh, and scan the QR code when you enter the church, but you still have to book in with Karen White as per normal. Um, children's Church contacts. If anyone's not on the uh, parents' WhatsApp group and would like to be, can you ring Janine on that number uh, or email Emma uh, on that uh, uh, address? I put this on the Facebook group so you can, uh, you can access it there, this information. Right, next. Advent craft bags. Again, Children's Church are organising and putting together for Advent some craft bags. That's because we can't do the kind of activities that we might do in a group, Chris Dingle, we can't really, we will do Chris Dingle, but it'll look a bit different this year. So I think the, the craft bags, I'm, I'm looking at hat now, I think they've got, they've got a Chris Dingle making kit. That's, that's right, so they've got a Chris Dingle making kit inside. Um, so it's going to be fun, they're going to be fun, but uh, can you please, if your child would like a craft bag, can you let, uh, again, Emma know on that email, which is easy. Emma81, I'm assuming that's her year of birth. Uh, Emma81baines at gmail.com. Is that right? Have I got that right? You now know how old Emma is. <laughs> young, very young compared to me. Okay. I can't hear a word of that. Okay, let, yeah. So join the WhatsApp group and then let them, let them know via the, the WhatsApp group. Next. Okay, these two, we are, our annual general meeting, which was in two parts, uh, the annual meeting of parishioners and the annual parochial church meeting. This morning, we have decided to postpone this because less and less people were booked into it for obvious reasons because we're in this restricted period. So um, we've, we've decided to postpone this. We have to get it done by October the 31st. So if we can't do it in here, we'll probably have to try and do it by Zoom. I think we're allowed, I've uh, been given permission to do that by, by the bishop. Okay, got any more? Okay, I've got a couple here. It was due to be communion this week, but we decided because there's just so many people here and given the, the additional restrictions, 
that the safer thing would be not to do communion this week. So we will come back to, we will be doing communion as soon as we're able in this service uh, twice a month as, as per normal. Um, on the school forms, this is the last week that the school forms, we're taking in the school forms this week and then Karen and I will meet this week to look at them and to go through two registers, one that was taken, uh, is taken in children's church and one that has been taken here in church every week. So we have the statistics to base it on. Can I please just um, say two things? Don't panic about the school forms. You know, got enough to worry about without in life, without worrying too much about that. You know, try, instead of, don't panic, just pray. Okay, try, try that. Um, so don't panic. The second thing is that the period from March the 22nd, that's when lockdown came in. Right, this, this is the bishop, what the bishop has said. So the period from March the 22nd until now is not counted. Okay, it's not counted because uh, not everybody, I mean, we've got fantastic numbers today, but not everybody can always get in to every church in the diocese. And so the bishop has decided that period, we're, we're not counting that. So the, the period that's being counted for 2020 is from January the 1st to the 22nd. That's the period. So is everyone clear about that? Okay, great. So, it's our harvest celebration. Go back to that nice picture there, Rob. Our harvest celebration for 2020 is a picture here of um, honey, because we're producing honey um, in our, from our beehives, which are in the garden. Which you, It's not really safe for loads of kids to go around the side. I know some did the other week for gardening, carefully supervised. Um, you would have seen the beehives, hopefully, hopefully not too close. Um, but you can see them if you stand at the railings there and look through, you can see them. Uh, I've been stung, um, not in, in our uh, churchyard, but in my garden, because these bees travel over and attack me there. Uh, but it's, it's worthwhile being stung once or twice, uh, because we are producing honey from there, and, uh, which is a great thing, because bees are under threat, aren't they? You know that. And uh, so Andrea, who is our a peerist, our beekeeper, um, she gets funding from the government. We don't pay anything for it. She gets funding from the government and, uh, to do this and to do various teaching in schools. So it's a great thing for us to support as a church. Okay. So for our opening prayer, there's some actions that we can all do. So when I say open our eyes, we can... Do something around our eyes. Well, we open our eyes. Open our eyes. Okay. Open our hands. We can do this, or somebody's doing that. That'll do. All right. Open our hands. Open our minds. Open our minds. Open our hearts. Which side's your heart? This side, isn't it? Hearts. Open our hearts. And open our whole lives. Okay, so when we do that one, we try not hit the person next to us. Open whole lives. Right, so let's do this together. Glorious God, we open our eyes to the wonders of your creation. We open our hands to the wonders, to the abundance of your gifts. We open our minds to the peace of your presence. We open our hearts to the mystery of your love. Glorious God, open our whole lives to your glory, and we shall be changed. Amen. So, we're going to have our first hymn now, which is a classic harvest hymn, perhaps the classic harvest hymn. We can't sing with our mouths, but we can always sing in our hearts. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land.
Let us take a few moments silence to perhaps shutting our eyes. Let us today think about um, ourselves as the human race who live on this planet. Let us think about the ways in which we have failed the creator and creation in how we have not looked after this planet. How we have um, squandered and wasted its resources. How we have neglected habitats. How we have polluted the oceans. and ravage the land. Let's just take a few moments silence to consider that. And we pray together. God of all creation, you have entrusted us with the earth to bless and to cherish, but we have caused disharmony. We have destroyed, we have divided. Forgive us and grant us humility, compassion, and wisdom that your whole world might flourish and thrive to your glory. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, before we have our reading, we're going to have a short video. It's a very special video because it's a Lego animation which has been made for us by Emma and Ellie. Do you want to just wave your arms? That's Emma and Ellie over there. They have made this, uh, they've made a series actually of uh, Lego biblical Lego animations, absolutely fantastic. I'm going to ask Rob to get the volume up because I think it's quite um, faint. But here we go. It's the six days of creation by Emma and Ellie. The six days of creation. Day one. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God made light reach earth's surfaces, resulting in night and day cycles. Day 2 God created the skies and seas. Day 3 God created dry lands and plants. Day 4 God created the sun, stars and the moon. Day 5 God created fish in the water and birds that fly in the sky. Day 6 God created land animals and humans. Day 7 
God had finished his work of creation. He blessed it, made it holy, and rested. It was brilliant. So we're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to have we're going to have a song now. Uh, it's just in a minute. But let me just say before we go on to the song and the reading, the six days of creation, uh, after which God rested. This can be seen in different ways. Some people, and people are perfectly entitled but to believe in this way because we live in a free society, and you know freedom of belief and freedom of thought, that's what we have. Some people believe it literally, <clears throat> that the world was literally created in seven individual days, and that's okay. Other people, me included, believe it's uh, an ancient, like an ancient kind of picture of how things came into being. Some people like can uh, marry it up with uh, e the evolutionary process, so it can be seen in different ways. Uh, it was a wonderful video, and it, but it helps us it helps particularly ancient people to understand how things came into being. Is that okay? Right, so we're going to have a song now, uh, which is a Graham Kendrick song, a beautiful song. It is Beauty for Brokenness. for brokenness hope for despair Lord in the suffering this is our prayer bread for the children justice joy peace sunrise to sunset your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives, cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak God of the poor Friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. From cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share, peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green, Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain, God of the poor, friend of the Compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravished earth, oceans and streams. Plundered and poisoned, a future and dreams. Lord, in our madness, carelessness, greed, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. Change our love from a spark 
justice burns brightly again until the nations learn of your ways seek your salvation and bring you their praise God of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion Gail is, Gail is here. Um, Gail is going to bring us our reading, but the reading's going to appear on a video. Thanks, Gail. The reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. <clears throat> so, Creator God, I pray uh, that uh, these words of Scripture that Gail has just read to us and my reflections on them will be your word, your message for us here, gathered here today. Amen. So on this Harvest Sunday, I want us to think about creation and our, our part in it. Because we are part of creation, we're not something or someone who is separate from it. You've heard of St. Francis of Assisi? You've heard of him, St. Francis? He understood this, I think, better than anyone of his era of Christian history. This is his canticle. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day and you give light through him. And he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendour of you most high, he bears the likeness. Be praised, my Lord, through sister moon and the stars. In the heavens you have made them precious and beautiful. Be praised, my Lord, through brothers, wind and air and clouds and storms and all the weather through which you give your creatures sustenance. Be praised, my Lord, through sister water 
She is very useful and humble and precious and pure. Be praised, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you have br- the through whom you brighten the night. He is beautiful and cheerful and powerful and strong. Be praised, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who feeds us and rules us and produces various fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. Be praised, my Lord, through those who forgive for love of you, through those who endure sickness and trial, Happy are those who endure in peace, for they will be crowned. St. Francis of Assisi. We are all part of creation, and creation is good. So, back to Ellie uh, and Emma. Day one. You help me with this. Light is good. And not only light, darkness is good. You don't sound too convinced. Day two, the sky is good. Day three, the land is good, that's better. And the oceans are good. Day four, Vegetables and fruit are five a day, remember? That's not in the text. That's day four. Day five. Fish are and animals are good. So, what about this? Day six. Humans are we are we are good. Creation is good and we are good because we are part of creation. You are good. You are all good. I'm sure there's some parents out there thinking not all the time. Who says so? Well, God says so. In Genesis 1.31, the last verse, in the first chapter, of the Bible. Then God saw everything that God had made and indeed it wasn't just good, it was very good. It was very good. We are good, we're not good all the time are we? Are we? Are we good all the time? We're not good all the time, sometimes we're bad and Sometimes some people are very bad. That's true, isn't it? But the important thing is this. We are good before we are bad. There's a theologian, uh, somebody who thinks deeply about the Bible, called Matthew Fox. And he did a whole, wrote a whole book on this called Original Blessing. We are good. God says we are good before we're bad. The story about how we became bad, and again, it's a story to help us understand it, is in the next chapter, Genesis 2, which we're not going to go into today, but you could read it if you want to. And we're not just good, we're not just good, we are blessed. We're blessed. God created us, creates us in his image, to be like him, to look like him. He creates us in his image and then God blesses us. And that word blessed in the Hebrew, Barak, same as Barak Obama, means to be adored. God adores us. He doesn't just love us, God adores us. God adores you. Is that encouraging? It is, isn't it? So creation is good. We are part of creation, so we are good. God has blessed us, and he has given us what the, um, I'm not sure it was in that particular version, but we're in the more uh, authorised versions, what, what is, God has given us dominion, dominion. 
over creation. I'm going to explain that word to you, that word dominion. It's not the same as domination. Dominion is not the same as domination. Okay, some people who have it in, for people who like the Bible, like to claim it is. It isn't. It, means, it actually means the opposite. Dominion means the opposite of domination. Again, the Hebrew word, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, the language of the Jews, is rada. And this relates to the idea, the biblical idea of kingship and rulership, which actually is quite different than our idea in our society of rulership. So God is the ruler of creation. God, if God created everything that we see and everything we don't see, that makes him the ruler. A closer word, really, a closer word, really, of our uh, dictionary would be guardian. God is the guardian of creation. And we have, are you still with me, everyone? We have been made in the image of God. Okay, I want you to think about an image. Who posts stuff up to Instagram? Actually, I don't know, I've come off it, but Instagram, Facebook, you put things up, pictures. Who puts pictures of themselves? Okay, that picture isn't you, is it? It isn't actually you, it's a picture of you. An image is something that represents, it represents you. It, it represents you. It's, it's not exactly actually you, it represents you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever platform you want to put it on. It's a representation. So we are, because we are made in the image of God, we are the representation of God on earth. It's an amazing thing. We represent God. We represent God. We look like God, in a sense. And we represent God on earth. Okay, I'm coming into close now. As God's representatives on earth, we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities towards the earth, towards the world in which we live and the earth upon which we live. We have responsibilities to care for the earth in the same way that God cares for the earth. And not to use or abuse it. I know we're not doing a very good job of that as human beings, but we, we have those responsibilities. We are guardians, if you like, of creation. We have been entrusted by God with creation's safekeeping, to keep it safe to safeguard it and to sustain it, to sustain its goodness. If you've got a good thing, you want to keep it safe, don't you? If you've got a good family, so many good families here, if you've got a good marriage, if you've got a good friendship, if you've got a, anything that's good, you want to keep it safe and you want to keep it going, you want to sustain it. Now, I don't you want you to get this final bit wrong and to misunderstand me. This is one of the reasons why I would, with a small c, consider myself to be a conservative. Because I want to conserve good things. I want to conserve the good things that God has given us. And that word, conserve, it literally means to keep safe together. Con means together, and serve means to keep safe, to conserve, to keep safe, and to do it together. And this is why, and it's kind of stalled because of COVID, this is why the Diocesan and Church of England Eco Church Initiative is such a good thing and this is why we must be on board with it as a church it's not a secondary thing 
It's not just an add-on, something, a box that we tick, that we're an eco-church. It's, it's going to be one of the most important things that we do as a church. And that's the reason why the, the children's church is leading it, because children and young people get this more than, they, than adults. Creation is good. We are part of creation. And God's first instruction, God's very first instruction, as recorded in the Bible, God's book, God's first instruction to us is to conserve, to guard, to keep safe the earth. This is our role and our duty, and we do it together. Amen? So we're going to uh, say a creed. It's a Harvest Creed, a Creation Sunday creed. A statement of what we believe. As I always say, two things. Uh, it's this, when we say creeds in church, they're not statements of facts in the way that we understand scientific facts. They're statements of mysteries that we enter into. So if you want, you don't have to say the creed if you don't want to, um, but we are, those of us who wish to, we'll say it together. I believe in God the Creator, who divided earth and sea, light and darkness, who created all that lives and breathes and moves. I believe that I am part of and have responsibility towards God's continuing creation. I believe in Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God, born in human form, living, dying, showing God's unconditional love, available for all. I believe that I should try to follow Christ's commandments, to love God with all my being and my neighbour as myself. I believe in the Spirit who manifests God's wisdom and power yesterday, today and tomorrow. I believe that I need the Spirit to enable and inspire me in life and to be with me in death. I believe in the Trinity of God, the one in three wholeness, the three in one diversity. I believe that the mystery of the Trinity will be revealed when we are transformed to eternity. Amen. So Cheryl, who is also uh, with us today, is going to lead us in our prayers again, which uh, are on the screen. Dear God, as we celebrate Harvest Festival, we give thanks for the blessings of food provision and nourishment. Please grow in us a harvest for the world. Come sow a seed of hope within our souls, Lord, that we might yield goodness, patience and kindness in abundance. Sow a seed of peace in our lives, Lord, that we might bear the fruits of forgiveness, compassion and righteousness. Come sow a seed of love in our hearts, Lord, that others would reap the blessings of family, friendship and community. May each seed of hope, peace and love grow within us into a harvest that can be feasted on by all. Amen. Creator God, provider of all, we bring you thanks today for daily bread and all who work to bring your harvest home. Thank you, Lord. Forgive our ingratitude, we who have so much, yet waste what you have given. For those whose harvest is poor, whose crops have withered, water tainted, children starve, help those who bring relief and bestow on us an unaccustomed generosity that all might share from your garden and all might sing your praise. God of seed and harvest, please continue to bless us so that the beauty of the world and the loving that created it might be expressed through our lives and be a blessing to others 
now and always. Amen. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, for all whose day starts with anxiety, as they leave the security of home, worrying about the risk of infection, particularly those whose health or age classifies them as vulnerable. Loving God, be close to them and keep them safe, along with all whose task today includes the care of frail and elderly. And for all of us, grant wisdom to make sensible choices, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. Lord, let us not forget, as daily life becomes more difficult and restrictions cause annoyance, that there are many for whom this has been normality for years, affected by long-term drought or destructive storms, struggling in poverty or through violence forced to adopt the life of refugee. May we remember to be thankful for what we have and work together selflessly for all who need our help. Give wisdom, Lord, to all in authority, not only leaders of nations but local communities, that actions and words are prompted by the needs of others and not personal gain. That all might ask the question, who is my neighbour? And as if seeing through your eyes, want nothing but the best for them. Loving God, what we desire is this, that people see not us, but through our smile, greeting, helping hand or helpful word. Your love reach out and touch, maybe at a time of need. Keep us focused through this day on being your servants in this place or wherever you might take us. And may your name be glorified through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Heavenly Father, Amen. We were going to have a video of the Lord's Prayer now, um, but I don't think we're going to, because I think it was six minutes long. And um, so I think what we'll do is we'll play it at the end as people are going out. And, uh, but you all know what the Lord's Prayer is, don't you? And you all say it during the week, I hope, at least once. Um, it's not a bad idea. There's some good stuff in it. Okay, so we are going to have a song now, which is our final song, um, which is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. By the Lord of sea and sky I have heard my people cry All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I
that I Lord I have heard you calling in the night I will go If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. So Thank you very much for joining with me, joining with us this morning in this harvest celebration. So remember, uh, God is good. God's creation is? We are? Right, what comes next? We are, um, we are made in God's and we represent him we represent God and so we have a responsibility to the earth to the world and to take care of it to take care of people to love our neighbor even to love our enemies that is God's first instruction to us is to dominion which doesn't mean domination it means to conserve to take care of together okay and we do that together here in church and in in wider society as we live our lives some of you may have bought harvest donations today um, if you have they've been put in a box outside if you, you still haven't put them in you could still give them to somebody um, we're, we are going to take those to the good neighbor project which is based at St. James's in the City Church in the city centre. They've got a project where they're taking out, it's not a food bank because it's difficult for people to come, so they've got, they're getting referred, people referred who are in need to them and uh, they're taking out food parcels. So if you know of anybody who is in need, um, let me know, okay? Or if any of you are in need actually, or loved ones, please let me know and um, we, we can help people because that's what we're as I've already said that's what we're here to do so we're going to collect together our worship in the prayer that we call the collect for today let us pray together creator God you made the goodness of the land the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons we, as we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we depart with a blessing. May the God who chooses to create and sustain life go with us as we choose to care for creation. May the son who chooses to see the potential of life in the outcast and the stranger go with us as we choose to see the potential of life in each person whom we meet. May the spirit who intercedes for us go with us as we choose to take the risk of following Jesus now and into the days ahead. Amen. Bless you. Hello. Over recent months, we have done our best to keep you informed of the financial challenge we are facing to bridge our income gap, sustain our buildings and clergy, as well as our mission and ministry within the local community. Little did we know when we began this process, which we have called stepping up to the plate, of the further challenge we would be faced with due to COVID-19. 
As our church buildings have been closed for the past few months, we have lost regular rental income from the church hall in Belgrave Road, as well as collections from our church services. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. We do not receive uh, anything in the way of funds from uh, the diocese. If you feel that you are in a position to help, there are many ways you can do so. Some people give through the parish giving scheme. Uh, one can also give through by direct debit or a one-off payment. Details of how you can do this will be on the following slide. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support of the church in so many different ways. God bless you.